come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey there, and thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, Hi. Movie Fiends. Every Saturday night, a bunch of us get together, watch a movie chosen round robin by one of the amazing internet superstars of the Saturday Night Freak Show. Then we gather around the bar and talk about it for your listening pleasure and enjoyment. Hey, but hey, we're running a special promotion for this month only. That's not entirely true. But hey, what we want you to do, because a lot of you have asked, how do you pick your movies? Well, we want to watch the movies that you pick for us. So we're having a listener's choice. Once. We're going to do four of them. Oh, okay. For one month. Four movies for one month. One month. Wait, this next month? In January. We're going to do Okay, in January. Good Sean's been gone. When nothing... Yeah, I... I, I, uh, Hello, folks. Uh, I'm a little out of the loop. All right, in January. Good, where nothing's happening. Right. There's no special holidays to celebrate or pick for. Exactly. Okay, good. So we figure that what we'll do is through the month of November, we'll take uh, requests. Uh, If there are more than four, we'll vote on those through December. If not, we'll just let it run through December. And then in January, we're going to watch four... Movies that you, listeners, you tell us that we should yes. watch. Uh, the only caveat is we're not going to do something that we've already seen. So you have to go back through our catalog, make sure we haven't already watched yes. that movie. So. We will right. not watch Mean Guns again. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> not happening. Exactly. So these are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Sean. Travis. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Sean. Yeah, why does he me. pick movies? He's only here when he picks movies. Isn't that weird? <laughs> it is kind of funny how that works. Uh, what was the last about that? events going on and Are whatnot? There? We Are all there? have So things. you're saying you're back now. Oh, I'm back. I'm yeah. back. Cubs have won the World Series. They've won, and so I, I don't need to be away anymore. There you go. Uh, so <laughs> what did we watch tonight, Sean? We watched uh, 1994-7's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. All right, so glad you're back. <laughs> <laughs> and you can expect more treats like this movie in the coming months. Oh, awesome. Well, we need to get back on our schlock kick, and this yes, definitely suits this the bill. Fits the bill. All right, so I feel personally responsible for this. Well, no, in it some is, way, it is your fault. Yeah, because this was all triggered by the fact that Renee Zellweger, yeah. who has uh, who's in the movie, yes, uh, oh, yeah. there was, are two Oscar winners in this movie. Was this her first movie? Yeah, I want to say so. There's no intro- introducing whoever uh, Renee Zellweger at the I beginning. Thought, of this, was but it I Empire think Record? I don't that's know. what I was going to look up. That's what yeah, I was gonna that's... Go. look up Empire Records for Empire, me. I yeah. thought Empire Please. Records was all right. Well, first of all, I guess let's pin down when was this actually made? This movie was made in 1994. Okay, it was released in 96. Released in 97. 97. Barely, barely released in 97. <laughs> yeah. When it was first. Uh, uh, first written and uh, first made, it was called The Return of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, written and directed by Kim Henkel, who co-wrote the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre, decided he wanted to make another one. And so in 1993, they sought funding to make this gem of a movie right here in front of us. Because I think there's always been some type of rights issue with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I mean, the original movie mm-hmm. uh, was funded by the mob. Right through a front company well, called. No, that Bryanston. was just the distributions. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. the guys just, who bought yeah. it. Bryanston was uh, the New York mob. I think they also put out the Devil's Reign. I'm not sure if they like did anything else. To be honest with you, some point the rights went to New Line Cinema mm-hmm. for the distribution, but somehow Canon Films end up making Texas Chainsaw Massacre two in 1986. And the New Line Cinema made Texas Chainsaw Massacre, or sorry, Leatherface, Leatherface. Texas, Texas Chainsaw, Chainsaw Massacre 3, three, three in like 1990, 91. No, it was 89? Could have been 89. Then it felt like 89 or 88. So here we are. So this has got to be some, uh, you know, it's Kim Hankel trying to reclaim the What, to he the wants right a bologna sandwich? He wants to the Texas <laughs> Chainsaw Massacre. Yes. And I'm going to read you the back of this because I think it'll kind of answer, or at least according to what whoever made this DVD thought of this movie. Who made it? Uh, well, I, was say, I don't know, because it's been released. I mean, there's a few different ones. I mean, this, what we're looking at right now, that's got uh, Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey was on the cover of this is not the original cover. Right. I'm pretty sure this was made to kind of cash in it's on the, the DVD star covers. power. 
basically how they yeah. always change the fucking DVD right covers. because what does everybody remember it's if a anybody woman Leatherface Leatherface is a woman hiding in the corner of the of the thing the tagline is if looks could kill she wouldn't need a chainsaw mm. there's also the other cover which is the lipstick that's, that's got the chainsaw blade going yeah. up to the I remember lips. that one those yeah. are the two the I remember VHS. seeing in the, v- yeah. in the video store um, but this one's a little bit different. Uh, it's also a different uh, cut of the movie, but we'll get into that. Really? Uh, right, yes. Well, there's all sorts of stuff. Wow. There, it's, a, it's complicated and it's a little interesting. Um, but the back says, uh, when a helpful family <laughs> when a helpful family invites two lost couples in for a good old down home massacre, the prom night teens find themselves all dressed up with nowhere to escape. Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey star in this hilarious, bone-chilling remake of the horror classic. Whoa. Now, that's how this is labeled, according to this. They're liars. Hilarious, (laughs) bone-chilling remake. Oh, yeah. They're uh, re-marketing the film, rebranding the film. Trying to rebrand it. That, like... Of course we knew. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what they're going to say about all these Star Wars movies now. They were going to be like, of course we are making homage. I mean, hello. Why would we take all this money and just remake it? Thing? I mean, yeah. we don't think our fans are stupid. Well, this is definitely like, I link, mean, it's, it's, I mean, just, okay. So this is my first time watching this. I'm yes. a big fan of Texas Chainsaw Lucky Massacre. Yes. Of a bitch. But Colin happened to mention offhandedly, and I think he's mentioned it before, but recently he said, you know, I've never seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre 4. It was because Renee Zellweger said, like, publicly right. acknowledged the movie, I think, for the first time. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, ever, maybe in a public interview. I think Just because so. Michael Bay made two of them. I want you to remember that. Just because. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> See, only felt comfortable saying it because it's like, right. yeah. Oh, it's gone a little more mainstream. I can yeah. mention it now. Well, yeah. Now I can, like, you know. Yeah, I'm further, far enough removed from it or whatever. So, Sean's like, what, you haven't seen this one? Because, yes, I've seen all the other ones. But right. this one, I remember when it came out, was like, like, it just... All the impression of it was like this is a really cheap ass <laughs> remake version of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh-huh. and it's like who needs to see this? But yeah. <laughs> and so you of it, all like, people skipped this movie. <laughs> you're like, how we gotta watch it. How is shocking. that? Possible? I know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I went from three, and then took like what a twenty year hiatus until the Michael <laughs> Bay uh, movie came around. Yeah, because yeah, so, I even tr- like uh, when it first came out in video. Well, it only came out on video, right? I mean, yeah, uh, yeah again, in 97, have. it was released in like five places for a so, theatrical. Yeah, one of them was Hollywood Video. <laughs> That's where I went. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think it was uh, Bunger Video in Rochelle. That's where, <laughs> That's where I saw this on the video show. Bunger shows. Video. Bunger wow. Video. Sounds almost. After this was after they closed down the uh, miniature golf on the other side of it. Yeah. yeah. And after seeing this, I knew. I'm like, oh, this is <laughs> it's franchise over. is dead. It's, yeah. it's done. That's the one that yeah. killed it. Yeah, because well, all mean, franchises think, died in the nineties. Yeah, either they went to space hell or or, <laughs> or just fucking space hell or direct to video. <laughs> That's a great name for a book. Yeah. Space, space hell, hell or direct to video. video. Copyright twenty sixteen. Oh, copyright two thousand sixteen. Henry Freak Show. Okay, so there's I think seven movies in this series mm-hmm. and an eighth one filmed and waiting for release. Waiting that would for be release, Leatherface yeah. itself. Yes. And the last one. Texas Chainsaw 3D, if yes. I remember correctly, was also like somehow Kim Hankel was back at it again. Like he had some kind of creative. Uh, He's always he always gets credit for characters created, and I'm pretty sure he has some hand in producing all of them that come through. I don't think it was all of them. Like I don't think they really had a whole lot to do. I mean, aside from cashing checks yeah. on the two Michael Blay- Bay the Platinum Dunes remakes. But right. the Texas Chainsaw. Oh, did it but go Texas back? Texas Chainsaw 3D is. I think. I think it's his because it gets back Gunnar Hansen. It gets back Marilyn Burns. You know, it is a direct sequel. It's ignoring everything else. It's a sequel to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yes. But all of these Directly. movies, I guess this is the thing, like, now having seen this and I've completed the completed entire it. series. I'm glad I could do this for you, Colin. Uh, thank you very much, you Sean. I mean, my life is now complete. <laughs> yes. so, the, so did Toby Hooper sell it off to, like, just everybody? I don't think he ever had it. I think that's the, that was the issue. I think somehow it got locked up and, like, so it was never his property, huh. I think. And so I think this might be Kim Henkel's attempt at like getting his name back in creatively with associated with the franchise. Mm. Well, I mean, what would to become a you know Weird. Right. franchise? Um, Way later on. Yeah, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh no, I was going to say that that basically to me. All right, you guys got to correct me if I'm wrong. There's seven movies released. Six of those 
are all the pretty much the exact same move. They're all remakes <laughs> of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, with uh, Texas Chainsaw Two being the only one that actually does feel like a, a potential it, continuation of yeah, the story. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because you usually have, I mean, to make a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, you have a group of people that start somewhere, run into strange weirdos uh, somewhere in the backwoods of Texas, end up at a big farmhouse. That's really all you need, big farmhouse, mm-hmm. where Maybe Leatherface and his crazy family uh, hang out. Mm-hmm. And then they become captive. You have to have the scene at the dinner table. I think all of them have that. No, the the remakes don't. Do they not? The remake doesn't have a dinner table scene. I can't I'm remember. Sorry, I know. Yeah, I'm pretty those. sure nobody huh. gets together because that's Arlie Ermey was in the remake. And I'm pretty sure I don't remember anybody ever mm-hmm. sitting at the table, yeah, right, was. hanging out. See, that's the problem. Is like after after fucking Texas Chainsaw Two, they just start bringing in family members. Every movie, there's just all these extra family members. Like, Who the fuck are these people? They I know are they're supposed rednecks. to. They, yeah. they have just family all over the place, loosely related. We'll call them. Yeah, but you know, I don't know. It's just like, like the movies when you're you're so used to in one and two, you're used to Bubba or fucking or Junior, right? Bubba, whatever, Leatherface. Yeah. And, uh, uh, the brother. Or Chop Top, or... There's the dead hitchhiker, or the hitchhiker from the first one, who they carry around in the second one, even though he's dead. They stuff him or whatever, right? Is that supposed to be uh, the hitchhiker? The hitchhiker? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're family, dude. I always thought they retconned right? the, the... I just thought they retconned the uh, hitchhiker into Chop Top. No, but Chop Top think, is a new guy. He missed the supposed- first movie because Chop Top was in Vietnam. He was in the military. Uh, but I always, but I, that's what I'm saying. I always thought they always refer to that dead thing as his butt. I always thought that was his army buddy. They always say it's his buddy. They never refer to it as like. Well, I can't remember the movie, all that, but I remember like the Fangoria articles at the time. So that's where weird. I'm from. So I'd have to go back and watch. Yeah, the movie, you have to check it out because I've always thought that was Chop Top's army buddy. He mm. brought back with him, you know, because people bring back ear, you know, that yeah. type he of just sh- brought back him. He brought back his friend, his army. Well, buddy. like in a duffel bag. Right. Yeah, I, dude, oh I, oh I, oh I, there's you're not supposed to think about Texas Chainsaw. <laughs> you're you're yeah, supposed to just, experience just, Texas let it happen. Chainsaw. Yeah. But I think the problem, they, the problem they've always run into in remaking Texas Chainsaw is they get it wrong every time. The first two movies are the only true Texas Chainsaw stories to me, personally, because they're not about crazy hillbillies going to kid ki- kill kids. They're basically about people wandering into yeah. their place and them freaking out and being like, well, yeah. now we have to fucking kill yeah, them. It's not yeah, that yeah. they're not cannibals. It's not sure. that they're not... You know, and in part two, they kill the kids that are talking on the phone, so they know. Well, fuck this lady's got. You know, they're always covering up their crime. Yeah. Usually, mm-hmm. in yeah, they're not just out prowling around right. looking for people to murder. They're living yeah. their life, and then they just get these people to come yeah. in. And, and then like, at the beginning of this movie, it's like August eighteenth, nineteen seventy three. Shit happens like it always does. Yeah. But this every is the narrator. It's the most. Me- and it really. And that's all they can say. Like, every few years, shit happens. Here's but this another is like one. The drunk yeah. narrator. Like usually, those narrators are like August eighteenth, nineteen seventy three. This guy's like, like August eighteenth, nineteen seventy three. Three guys. They went to this place. But then it's like. Then it happened two other times, and then and after that, silent once every years, other even year, like five years and then, later. Five years, but later. then as soon as you get in this movie, they just start freaking out. It's like, how are they quiet for five years? They can't even, they can't even have a fucking uh, uh, a tow truck like business without just killing people. It's like, how is this silent at all? Right, and, <laughs> not, and what ends up being not so far from a high school, apparently. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. really quiet. Out there, really? because I think that's why the first one works is that idea of isolation. Like right. these in kids the are middle of off into the middle of nowhere, and yeah. in this one, well, I mean, and they, you get the idea that like Franklin and his sister are from Texas originally, but do we even know if they're? I mean, they must be going to college somewhere else, or yeah. and those are their college buddies just going back there. They're going back for like a weekend. Well, they're coming from like a city, like yeah. Austin or something, and going out to find like their parents. Well, they're lured out there in the first one because. They get reports of the graveyard being dug up. Right. And they want yeah. to they save to, their grandpa. Yeah. Or their, and since like, they're out yeah. there, they're like, let's go visit the old place. And then it turns out that the the 
the Sawyers, right? The, so- the Sawyers. Well, that's the part two. The they call them the Sawyers. And the Hewitts and the Sawyers. Because the, yeah, the know, Saw's family. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, see what they did. There. So, it, yeah, it's, it's right. always been a humorous series, right? Yeah. Even the yes. first one. Like, I remember Toby Hooper saying, you know, it was supposed to be a lot more funny than it was. He thought it was funny. He thought that movie was going to get a PG rating. Like, somehow, <laughs> right? <laughs> In 1974. Bones are funny. It was terrifying. Bones. Yeah, the and chicken bone. fucking terrifying. See, I always thought he was joking. With it. I've never talked to Toby Hooper seriously when he's like, we can call head cheat. Like, I always thought he was joking <laughs> at the fact that he made this like grueling, terrifying thing. He doesn't want people to think he's a psycho. So he like when he talks about it, he's always like, ah, it's funny. Come on. You know, come on. Yeah. I mean, it is funny. I mean, the whole like, look what your brother did to the door. Did, but that's almost like the only funny. But I mean, really, <laughs> there's not a lot of well, real of funny yeah, shit because to I mean, it. The, 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 funny kind of I mean, the, the grandpa, like, yeah, right, just barely the, holding the hammer, trying to hit yeah. someone over the head. It's like, eh, it's kind that's a, that's of funny. It's, like, in it's a, a black like, comedy. Yeah. It's, it's a black, like, yeah. Well, this is pretty dark if it's yeah. funny at all. And it's actually coming yeah. across as, like, horrifying, you know. The guy mm-hmm. making fun of her while she's screaming, you know, at the table. And, so, like, yeah. my first question in this movie uh, is. First of many. Why? Oh yeah, dude! Like, if you're like, it takes place at a prom. Oh, we we can't afford prom decorations. Okay. Do we have uh, lights? Prom. We'll just have lights outside of a door, and someone comes out of a prom. Yeah. And All right, cool. a big sign that says prom night just so they get the idea. Yeah. It's like why haven't had a fucking doing? prom at that point? It's like you could just be like. Why can't they just be driving on their way to meet people? It's like this movie. You can, can start almost start right anyway. There, yeah. Like we don't even need this. Like but then uh, you miss the ditzy the girlfriend, most, the girl the that greatest that, characters. The, the yeah the the lady that I think slept with Kim Hankel to act in this movie. That check the hot, that's like the hot one. You're you're well, kissing this girl. It's just like this it's like, lady. It's my fault. I don't have sex with them. That's the worst. Even before that girl shows up, the worst actress in this movie, I think, is that girl who comes out. She's of like the, staggering out of the gym. Yeah. Yeah. Who's like, yeah, you know, I yeah. don't know what was she, she's was doing. She was the hitchhiker. Was she a schizophrenic? Like, she was the hitchhiker, deal? right? I don't know. I don't know. What hitchhiker? She what was this version about? of the this movie's version of the hitchhiker. But she wasn't related to the family. Or she either was, that or she's, she's no no. Having I'm, a I'm sorry. No, I'm going I'm gonna go back on what I said. No, she's this movie's version of a Remember how in the first movie, when they first get to the graveyard, there's that guy be like, they say, they come yeah. out, that's that, right? It's just yeah. this weird person saying weird things that you're supposed to be like, Ugh. With weird body, like, she didn't say weird things, just the movement. I was kind of hoping she like, would have been one of the family Yeah, moments. but this is where they... <laughs> it would have made more sense. It would have made a right? lot of sense. But this is where it doesn't make sense, is well, because these scenes at the beginning this of the movie, movie, at the, the prom is supposed to establish, like, society, or like, right, this is the yeah. safety of civilization. Yeah. And we're going to take these people really? and move them into the wild, and that's where the cannibal, crazy cannibals yeah. are. I guess so. Right? I just figured, so it like, it's a horror movie. Right. Like, prom well, nights. Well, that's where you got to establish the uh, safe base and then leaving yeah. safe yeah. base to go off into the unknown, and that's where they meet up High with these school, people. High school, normal life. Yes. Yeah. And, and they, they just throw characters into the meat grinder that we haven't even had a chance to meet. There's a car right. accident where there's a guy who, like, stumbles out and badly I think their cousin and falls down and had access to a school and they're like we need to start this movie somehow what do we do in the school i don't fucking know yeah. what well, could it be nighttime what would they do in a school at nighttime pro you know yeah, yeah, yeah. dance well this is a missed opportunity i think or maybe as we explore this movie we'll find out that there's something there but like the idea if you start a movie with like prom is something about prom dates and eventually you got leatherface and he's going to be her prom date or something by the end of the movie or leatherface is in love or whatever but they've done that already in the second one Right? Yeah, the they did it in the second already, one, Leatherface yeah, yeah, of Love. Yeah. Came of age, mm-hmm. basically. So, yes. like, there's nothing There's nothing to be gained from this movie by having the main characters be leaving a prom, other than just they're dressed. No, and, and, no, and, and, yeah, like, and you don't have them in tux. They're dressed, dressed nice. Now they're dressed and got ruined. it establishes, <laughs> uh, if nothing else, age, that they are young Oh, people, yeah, because everybody's 40 <laughs> in this movie. Right. The whole high school is just like, uh yeah. Well, the only thing that lasts through the whole movie is she's always wearing the corsage right. till the very end. That's my only theory. They yeah. wanted that corsage in the whole movie. Something, right? So just like, like it visually. means something. Yeah. We need her to wear a flower the I whole have no fucking idea. time. Yeah. This that's movie it. means nothing. Prom. Done. Yeah. Um, so they run into a. Uh, you know, I just thought oh, wait, would wait, be wait. cool if we got if murdered. We right died. Here. 
and like they made a song about us. Where <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Who is she? It's who's it's- Kim Hankel? That's what I want to know. Who the fuck <laughs> does he think people talk like this? That's what I say. Like. He did it right, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> He's a lot. He sat next to Toby Hooper. As Toby Hooper's like, yeah, 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 I got this. Yeah, well, there was a lot of ad libbing on that set. And Kim Hankel is or it just not shows the his contempt for young people at that point. Yeah, he had been like fifty by the time. Oh, uh, it was what's twenty years after the first one. He was probably in his twenties or thirties when the first one was made. Right. Yeah. Assume, right? So yeah, he just doesn't like young people. So he's like, let's make them idiots. Or just They're don't understand him. Yeah. Yeah. Or whatever. I guess it's, it's black comedy. So this is like the Beavis and Butthead generation, I suppose. But they run the into... boyfriend kind of definitely was. Yeah, right. He kind of had that like kind of airy voice. Or he's like, come on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> like, is that Sean? The Sean character? I, yes. Was he the guy in the tuxedo? Yeah, the, 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 the shorter the hair. dickhead. Yeah. yeah. There's the dickhead and the cuck who's just like, do what the girls say. I once saw him trying to have sex with girls. <laughs> it's like, who the fuck is this pussy? <laughs> like, that guy pissed me off. And he is. He's not dating Renee Zellweger. That's what I thought they were. He's a pothead. He's, he's, and they're just getting high, yeah. He's her date for prom. But, but yeah. they're just a pothead and a nerd. Yeah. How she a nerd? Glasses, hair hangs in her face. <laughs> not I like uh, Dork. I like nerdy Renee Zellweger. This is the most attractive I've ever found her. No way, dude. Empire Records. Empire Records, Which too, yeah. That's the only movie she's getting. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> ah, and she's got, like, the ponytail or something. Uh, the... No. Does she? Yeah. I don't know. Texas Thanks, Chainsaw yeah. Diary. But they run into... Uh, well, after this car accident, they go search for help and end up in this movie's ver- version of The Cook, right? Yes. From the original Leather oh, yeah. or Texas Chainsaw. <laughs> But we don't. We're not aware of this yet. Well, it's a real like, estate agent or something. This this female. Yeah. Because yeah. what did we talk about? They got into a car accident. Like she says, we get into a car accident and then get into a car accident. Yeah. It's yeah. one of those weird like writing things. I think he's dead. You... Is he dead? I think he's dead. And we got to bring help. What so do they... I do? What do I do? This is hilarious. Yeah. And but this is <laughs> uh, this is the thing. Like you know, and uh, having watched these movies, ultimately, uh, you know, that's what's tipping the hand. That I'm like. This woman's acting really weird. She's flashing her boobs at like people who throw rocks through her window and she reacts like not at all. Like, Oh, that's just the kids, you know, trying to get my attention. Like they just threw a brick through your window and shattered the glass. It was the most like, uh, lackadaisical kind of like nonchalant, like, Oh, that's just them out there. Like, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> so then she do. goes and flashes her boobs at him. I'm like, okay, those so were not she's hers. off her rocker. Yeah. 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 She's in the family. And so we know, and so we know that she's in the family. We know she's and in so the little family. Tense. But like, here's the thing: that's about what I'm saying, how movies. do they keep this calm for five years? Right, <laughs> because as this gets on, you know, as this series keeps going on, eventually, by the time you get to the remake, well, hell, in this one too, like every single person that you come into with, come in contact with, within ten fucking miles of base camp, the, yeah. the Texas Chainsaw House, every single fucking person that you're going to run into. Is crazy. They're a nutball. And they're related to the family, and they yeah. can't help and it. They're it just all point. like, "Woo, we look at the other So, like, what the fuck? Like, how did these people pretend to be normal at all? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, yeah. How does she sell houses? With her boobs, I guess. That's what she like, said with her boobs, she got like she paid for a yeah. boob oh, job. That's very true. That's yeah. true. Something. It makes no goddamn sense at all. It was just like it's just like ooh chaotic. It's just like I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, your idea is that these characters are the... They have no boundaries, no morals, the... How did, how did no, none of the townsfolk question that if their high school sons are vandalizing property and this woman's flashing them? Like... That never crossed their mind. Well, she never weird. repeats it, or she never reports it. Sorry. Never reports it, and they're not going to say anything. So it's just a little. They don't secret see the woman them. in the window flashing her. Face she's in the middle she's, of almost nowhere. But she's been flirting with everybody. Apparently, she's been flirting with the cop. The cops. There's yes. the, the one good scene in this movie. Remember, I'll give it that it was a decent scene where this woman has a victim in the trunk of her car, and she's pulled through a, a, a drive-through. Yes. And is getting some food. Has the trunk open, and the cops pull up behind her, and we're like. You know, this is the moment where, like, something's going to happen. The cop gets out of his car and walks up, and she's like, okay, now you be quiet now, closes the lid, and the cop doesn't see what's there. I was like, that was decent, right? I mean, like, as horror decent, movies go. Decent, right. given, right. decent like, given Renee Zellweger room? is just talking normal. Or drive through. Yeah. In parts where she should be hysterical. She's like, I can't breathe I can't anymore breathe. back here. Can you poke a hole in the bag? Yeah. Like, she's just kind of level. Was that supposed to be funny? 
I, I mean, that's I, unintentionally funny, but it was is. it intended that way? I don't know. I think I, I, I think, think it has to be. I feel like that part was intentionally funny. I feel it has to be because there's no way you tell your actress to be like just uh, deliver it even. You're not hysterical. Once again, how are you silent for five or twenty years if you're at a drive-through and you're like, you want to see the body in the trunk? It's like what the fucking shit. It makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> she's crazy. She cray. She cray cray. But she's not even the one that gets all of these kids together. She calls a tow truck oh my that's God. run by Vilmer. Oh, my God. The all right, all right, Matthew all right. McConaughey. Oh, the. whose birthday is today, the day that we're recording this? Uh, How did you do this, Happy birthday, Sean? Matthew McConaughey. I just knew. There you go. <laughs> I don't you care. Can, you He's can a really it. big fan. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently so. Right here. This is years before the McConaughey's. Yep. Oh, yeah. I'm a connoisseur. So, yeah. do we figure out, like, uh, Days and Confused was prior to this, right? Yes. In yes. his career. That was, like, 92 or something 93. like that. 93. Okay. So, they shot this. So, this is another. He's a genuine Texan, right? Yeah, You're going to make a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You cast an actual so dude He's from like, it. I could be in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, he boy, He ends up he. being a crazy, crazy. I mean, like. The, he's dedicated. His performance is unhinged. Yes. Yeah. It's just, it makes an impression. He yeah. is trying to out act by sheer volume alone. Yes. Because there'd be nothing else in, else in this movie. By sheer it's force like, and movement, he's yeah. doing it. The way that, like, I think in the original movie, how hectic it is, is from the actress. Um, what's her name? Marilyn, Marilyn Burns. Burns, yeah. You know? So he's like, well, we're not going to have that. The dude will do that. So he's just. <laughs> Well, he's kind of that's the a direct, that's a direct quote, by the way, ladies. <laughs> oh no, no, <laughs> that's a quote. <laughs> when, he jumps, when he jumps off the roof, <laughs> well, you have to <laughs> say that Matthew started. McConaughey looks like he's having a lot of fun in this right? movie. Yeah. I mean, I don't nothing know, else. Trying yeah. to maybe just amuse himself. Just insane. I don't know. Yeah, and he's got nothing to say, so and it's just like, oh, you know, not to bury the lead, but the fucking yeah, two fingers, the two bowl, finger you know, yeah, like. <laughs> dirt. <laughs> but uh, his fucking tow truck says Illuminati towing. I missed that one. Oh. Does it say Illuminati towing? Oh. Yeah, put, just put that I nail right it. there in the head. Just yeah. hammer it in. Just right there. And then, like, all he talks about is, like, you don't even know, man. I mean, you got questions, but you don't. You know, it's just like, what the fucking <laughs> bullshit? Yeah. And this movie takes a very strange turn toward the end of it. Should we oh. talk about that now or wait until the. I don't know what else we're going to talk let's, about. Let's, well, let's, let's get there. Let's get there. Because what? There's fog in this movie. There's, there's woods lots in this of fog. movie. There's people. You I run mean, from trucks. There's a lot of familiar beats in this movie. Can we say that? Yes. Like yeah. almost. Yeah, nothing painfully else to do. Familiar. Yeah, directly yeah. lifted from directly. the original movie. Except Which for like the shock. Because there was kind of a shock when. You found out the the barbecue gas station guy was the leader of these crazy dudes, right? Right. Shock is gone in this in this in that matter like, because we're four movies in. Because like so I said, well, how shock you can't get? Yeah. Like how do you even know? So again, like Matthew McConaughey, sheer volume is how you're going. Yeah. Sheer volume and craziness well, because, and loudness. Well, he's yeah. like the chop top of this movie, right? It's kind like we of, didn't have fuck. chop top in he's the a first mixture one, of the so dad we bring and chop top in for this remake, right? Because mm-hmm. the the uh, well war. The third one had the Vigo Mortensen character, which it was a lot that. less uh, what grandiose, called? boisterous, grandiose. Yeah, yeah I suppose. Yeah. And, and this character, they keep on trying to get rid of the dad care. They keep on trying to mix the dad and Chop Top to just be some like guy. That's kind of crazy. Mm. But yeah, there's another character in the stupid. family too, a guy who I don't know what. It, all, he, yeah, he, all he yeah. does. I think his name is W E or W E. Yes, yeah. it's W E. And all he does is quote famous literature and then immediately tell you who, where he got the quote from. And that becomes his entire character. That's Billy Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah. That's because Ralph there's something Waldo going on it. here, man, that you don't understand, man. But it's you been going it. on for a long time. But you got to say it in, in the form of a quote. No, but I'm just saying that's why. Because <laughs> he's the other side of that where he, you know... There's something bigger going on. He's smarter than all you people. This is why you're the victims, right? Like we're the we're the killers, and we you're the victims because yeah, yeah. we've intellectually like backed up our arguments. Well, that makes me think of you know when you were talking before <clears throat> the idea that like you know as these movies get going that everyone is in on it, and how the hell do they keep this quiet and all that you know because like the, the whole family is spread <laughs> all over the county. Mm. I think it's supposed to you know like a grim fairy tale or something. It's supposed to be saying like. Hey, you city kids, because that's who they're aiming these yeah. movies at. Yeah. Don't leave the safety of <laughs> the civilization because out in the woods, this is a cautionary tale, right? The things that will eat you 
are lurking out there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like, so everyone basically then that they would encounter is a demented hillbilly. They're not educated. They can't, you know, they hunt their own meat and mm-hmm. apparently eat their own. I couldn't figure out in this movie, like what their purpose, purpose was, was yeah. other than to just murder that's, anyone well, who came that's by. That's the well, surprise well, ending. Once we get to it, the surprise ending. What a shock. So surprising. It was almost stamped on the side of the car. It was stamped <laughs> on the side of the car, which that's, I couldn't believe it. I was that's, how like, Holy subtle, shit. that's how it's subtle. That's how subtle. Not this even movie like. Is. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what the fuck Kim Hankel was thinking when he got to like. Cause, I mean, what else are we gonna talk? Are we gonna like. Well, we haven't talked about the one character that like this entire franchise revolves around. Leatherface. And that's Leatherface. <laughs> yeah. Who's kind of relegated oh, right. here to like he was a in bit this. part in his own movie. A bit screaming yeah, part, I mean, he yes. He wasn't really. All he this. did was scream his head yeah. off once again to make up for the fact that the woman's not screaming. In this movie, Leatherface is a com- he's gone full retard, right? I mean, like in which the- he was to be he was fair. Always, he was always retarded, but, but in the was- first one, he was a like a mongoloid. He was scary because he was freaking out because yeah. people were encroaching on their territory. Like, oh my god, they're gonna find out. We're gonna get caught. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. get caught. Yeah, like, reason to- him at the window, like, <laughs> freak, like what? it's like I can't. You know, his brain doesn't work enough to figure this stuff right. out. And then in the second one where he's, you know, Leatherface, like a kid in love or going through puberty or he's something. He's Bride of Frankenstein, yep. Bride of Leatherface. The third one, they make him more of like the enforcer, the family's he, enforcer. Yeah, he is Michael he becomes Myers, like a, Jason. A darker, like uh, Leatherface, right? Whenever the kids get loose, let loose. Let That's when he has like long hair metal, like fucking like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like he's just, he's awesome. He's not retarded anymore. They don't call him Bubba or Junior or any of that pussy shit. I think they still call him June. Do they? They don't call him Leatherface, I don't think. I think he's, Leatherface. He's Junior or something like that. Get that bitch Leatherface. Yeah. Dog will hunt. And he's dog just like, will yeah, hunt. he's just the, the shark, right? <laughs> the yep. chainsaw wielding yeah, dog multi the dog oh, yeah. family. Ooh. And so in this one, yeah, it's like, you know, you go into it, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, what's going to happen with Leatherface? And he's basically like this bumbling, screaming idiot who stumbles through like a lot of the scenes. He catches one of the girls, can't even seem to contain her. This is the like, thing. Why yeah. would he Leatherface kill her? Does. Right. I couldn't understand the motivation. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those like, things. But it's but like it's also, he's just trying to entrap them. Not it's weird because to... when we're introduced to him, he's just sneaking up behind the, the dimwit of the group and just kind of touching her. Checking her out, smelling her. Yeah. It was yeah. a really awkward it's scene weird. because it, it was like, I heard him step up behind yes. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It went, <laughs> Yeah, but she doesn't hear it. Which I hate that. Like, I mean, I'm jumping a little bit towards the end, but I just want to get to it quickly with one because since we're talking about Leatherface, the only idea that they brought up in this movie that I'm like, well, fuck, that could have been a whole movie in itself is it's time for a new face. You know, yeah. Leatherface yeah. is looking for a new face. Yeah. Yeah. That's an awesome, like, holy fuck, you could build something on that. Why they chose not to? They mentioned it for two seconds and then they're gone. Yeah. Mentioned it for two. That's just like a creepy thing they're going to do to Renee Zellweger. It's like, oh, I want your face. I'm like, ah, fuck, that would have been a cool idea. Like, his shit's all decrepit. And once again, like, to get into the special effects, like, probably one of the worst Leatherface, like, masks. Yeah. Uh, yeah just I not inspired. So. Yeah, it's not no. scary. It's all droopy on his face. Scott doesn't curly necessarily mullet look like uh, curly mullet, yeah. and he's got a mm-hmm. shittier mullet. Like yeah, like yeah. there's a yeah. fake head on longer. the longer one on the back. Yeah. yeah, he's wearing a he's wearing a military jacket, which I think is kind of in reference to like hitchhiker, or chop top, whoever the fuck you want to. It's got the call yellow apron. Whatever. Like, that's my only that's the oh, 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 only positive thing to me about this is it does return. Leatherface to the Ed Gein uh, things of dressing up as a woman, cross dressing, mm, you know? Because mm-hmm. they totally take that out of uh, three. two yeah. and three. Yeah, it's yeah, not in two three. either. Yeah. Where mm-hmm. that's one of those things when the first time, because I mean, you know, if you're, I was, you know, born in the 80s, so I worked backwards on Texas Chainsaw. I remember the first time <laughs> yeah. I saw the original. It shocked me at the dinner scene. I'm like, why is he dressed like a woman? Like, yeah. I had no idea the Ed Gein <laughs> reference or yeah. any of that shit. And I was just that, like, okay, crazy well, dude dressed like a woman. It, it's, it's just, it's it's like in it's those scenes, time. because he's the mother <laughs> character, because there's no feminine influence yeah, in, exactly. that, in right. that family, because they keep grandpa around. And so in this movie, there is like, and that was what, I guess, the other thing that 
not that I liked it, but I was like, this is just interesting. It's fascinating because they've added a feminine dynamic to right. the family mm-hmm. itself by the inclusion of the real estate agent, yeah. who's not like a matronly woman. I mean, she's, you know, in her 30s, probably or tw- mid 20s. So it's like, OK, so she's Matthew McConaughey's girlfriend. Like a now, I, have, I have a theory. Like... I have a theory because at one point when the. Uh, the we'll say the Illuminati representative shows up at the end. And the, the, you mean the point where the movie just flies right just the fuck woo, off the rails? Out the window. Gone. <laughs> yeah. uh, like scarred the nipple bellies and all out yeah. the window. Oh, you didn't see that coming, viewer? You oh, did? Well, no, neither you didn't. did we. <laughs> Nobody did. Yeah. I saw it. But when he's kind of walking around the room, she looks at him and he's like, You uh, don't you start. You know why I'm here. Like there's a reason she's there for yeah. some, and I th- because I, she I feel remember, the, Illumina- the Illuminati put her there to kind of handle them, and then she fell. S- she's been there so long, she fell in with the group and started to. No matter how she thinks do... she has an explosive in her head, yeah. I mean, but I think that's part of it, though. Like, but she that's got why too she close made that reference, group. like you know why I'm here, right? But yeah, I think but she got I, too I close to leave. the group. I right. got a bomb in my head. But I got I think, a bomb but in But I think he end. convinced her of that. Like, she was normal well, at some point. But in this movie, she I does think. have a bomb in her head. That's how I'm convinced of that. <laughs> <laughs> she was not lying. The movie goes when a guy has a three cow nipples or whatever. Like, I call them udders. Those were not nipples, yeah. right? He had three cow udders with pierced, looked like some out of fucking night breed. Like, he crawled out of Midian. Yeah. I, I thought it was going to be like a whole Total Recall thing where it's just going to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he was gonna like make on her suck his tit. Something. Well, yeah. it has like it's it no point to it for like, a while. No point. For a while, the movie goes with the idea that like these people are crazy. They're like yeah. you know they got Illuminati Illuminati trucking. He's saying that they're you think you know that the house is wired for sound this video, video cameras, and, which I like that point though because he was making a true point. Like you think they don't know. You know, yeah, but at the time they're you looking read it at as that he's crazy, like these people are crazy, and you're like, okay, so well, they're just sure. laying this in. But then the fucking Illuminati, like a limo, a pulls, limo up, pulls up, and an Italian, well dressed Italian guy gets out. Or he starts, might have supposed to be French because Illuminati is French. Well, he does Maybe, say yeah. he says something in French. I thought yeah, he said he something in German. Yeah. So I he's like, he's reading, reading an Italian, Italian newspaper because it's all over everything. the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's all over the world, dude. It is, man. Yeah. So it's like just this really weird, and you're like, "What in the fuck is happening here?" <laughs> the guy the comes fuck? in. Renee Zellweger's in the, the the dinner scene, which apparently she they didn't tie her down in this movie because nothing makes no. any sense. No, nothing makes any sense because they they <laughs> want her to get away. Because that's what I'm saying. Leatherface isn't point. trying to kill her. He's just no. chasing her around. He's not trying to kill nobody. But the motivation they want them to get away. We're saying like so the, the you know the it's horror the soft the Sawyer family used to be like you know they were meat, cannibals. Well, they were they were meat packer or uh, oh, slaughterhouse yeah, yeah. workers. Yeah. Slaughterhouse right? workers. Yeah. They and shut down the because the economy and whatever the jobs left the slaughterhouse shut down. They didn't know how to do anything else apparently, and they're crazy. And so they started killing people and making. We find out in the second movie. They're making barbecue out of making people. Making fucking right. chili. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, okay, <laughs> chili competitions. Makes, it's sick. Oh, that's just a peppercorn. <laughs> right. Yep. It's sick, but it makes a certain kind of sense. In this, you're like, yeah, it's an so their motivation yes. is because the, the Illuminati has placed them there to Spread abduct fear. people, terrorize them, and oh. cause horror. And let the, yeah, oh, horror. <laughs> And then, and then apparently let them go and take them to the hospital or the police station or whatever. But he is disappointed with them. So somehow this is a farce of what he really wants. It's usually... So I'm like, what does he want? It's usually a pretty tightly run ship, but not when he shows that's up. That's why apparently. I don't know. It's like, is he saying that, like... That's why I'm confused. At first I was like... Is he saying that more people should be... Are they fucking up because they're not letting people go? They're too busy killing them? I think maybe. And not letting them be... Like they're going too far. They're supposed to be, like, terrifying them and letting them go. So people are like, don't go in there. There's crazies in the woods. But they just keep killing people. But, like, I don't understand because, like, okay, fans, if, uh, you know, if you heard some of our podcasts, you know, uh, I'm a a fan of Illuminati (laughs) theories and conspiracies and shit like that, whatever, right? (laughs) It's like it's so easy. Everybody just stopped to pause their thing and laugh. That's what everybody just did right now. It's no, welcome back, listeners. It's and thank you, Illuminati. But it's for a joining very us. easy yes. thing. We talked about a horror movie called The Conspiracy, yeah. where they literally just looked on YouTube for a half an hour of Illuminati shit, and they they got it all down. They got at least 
parodies or parables of the things they needed to be like, oh shit, man, these guys are talking about Illuminati shit. And it's like, these fucking people don't know anything about, because it's just like, what? Spread sure. horror. It's in a pre-internet yeah. day, right? Yeah. The Illuminati yeah. at this point apparently just want to undermine society by placing, yes. I assume, in different cities, pet, you know, these crazy Urban legends. people. Who that's what he's saying, right? Urban people. legend. If not it's almost like the acquiring, dude. It's almost like, like this stuff exists, and now we're gonna bring you into our fold. And it's almost for like, us. like uh, they were doing this, but now like you'll do Halloween it for us six. Now. How the doctor? How Halloween six? Yeah. You know, Michael Myers is an evil in the world until a druid group is like, "Fuck it, dude. We could like get this evil and use it for our ceremony." Right. What are, yeah, what are we using it for? Mm-hmm. So this is like on everybody's. I don't know if this was, was this their way of being meta without trying to be movie meta? Were they trying to just think of the idea of fear and horror and like, how do, how does Leatherface, Michael Myers, Jason, how does that fit into an urban legend type of like, it's went on for 30 years, you know? It feels like for it could 30 be. years. Like there is a meta desire. message in there somewhere. It's just shit. It's just shit. <laughs> But maybe not so clear. It is pretty fucking weird. It's Let's weird. put it that it way. Is weird. Why weird. did he even have to have carved? It's like why are why are you from uh, Midian? Like why does the <laughs> FBI guy or whatever fuck have to have the a Illum- carved the up Illuminati belly? guy? Travis, he's an he's Illuminati, Illuminati guy. Well, but then he said yeah, FBI. Shirt, That's he's... why it's like I know he's an FBI and Illuminati. Hello. He probably runs both. It's possible. Uh, hello. It's possible. We don't know anything about these. They're people. here. They're, they're there. They're everywhere. <laughs> See. They're in all of your fucking institutions. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is. But Kim this Hankel, is also. I'm sorry. Who must like have like yeah. You know, this is maybe a personal belief system or whatever. He's trying yeah, to work possibly. into the movie. This is what Eyes Wide Shut was about, right? Eyes Wide Shut. A doctor goes to a scary fucking party, and then the doctor goes to him at the end. He's like, dude, they do that to scare people. They want you to think. They're so untouchable that oh, they're surrounded by Satanists and by and by occult rituals. They want to scare you away from trying to find out anything yeah, so about you, well, them. Well, it's so you won't tattle on them. Yeah. That's or, basically the thing. And eyes wide shut. And in well, this, it's like I mean, I suppose because he lets her go at the end. He, like, mm. I apologize for this. Mm. You know what's happened. Can I drop you at a police right, station gone, or a hospital? Well, it should have gone better than this. It's I'm very surprised. odd. There's a lot of odd yeah. things in it's, this movie. Let's, for instance, talk about a scene oh, in which leg. the boyfriend. Oh yeah, Jesus! The okay. third star of the movie <laughs> is the fucking robot leg. So memorable. Uh, Matthew McConaughey Stuck limps around. Me. It's kind of reminiscent of what Leatherface had going on in the third movie because he got run over, or whatever, in the in the yeah. second one, right? So he had a brace in yeah. the third oh. movie. So now McConaughey's got this crazy thing with tubes on it where okay. at some the point... pneumatic leg. I'm saying this actually happens in the movie. Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey get into a war <laughs> over his leg with a pair of TV remote controls because apparently the TV remote controls are broadcasting well, some signal Well, he built that, that freaks VCR, out his... sig- the whatever mechanism, into the brace. That's why that works. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Is this a reversal on the whole... And like, Is that like a just a bizarre fucking stupid pair Terrible yeah. of man versus woman, right? Over the remote control at the end of the fucking movie. Because, like, this whole movie is about. That's I, all it is. That's all it is. Dude, I'm about. telling you, because Renee Zellweger, you know, she's not going to be the screaming, crying. It's all the men that are screaming and crying in this movie. None of the women are screaming no, and crying. That's true. The one friend at the beginning, when she's having the run out with Leatherface. She, she hangs on screaming. a hook and doesn't scream. She's for fuck's screaming. Sake. She's. Screaming quite a bit. No, but you know, but I'm just talking about the main character. Renee Zellweger's like, like she's like, she I'm not gonna that. break. I'm not gonna get psychological. This is why this movie doesn't work, right? How well, can if it's not scary to her? Well, well, I mean, but like, if it's not scary to the main character, why am I scared? I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like the performance, I mean, and because it's a remake, you have the original to go back and compare it to, where Marilyn. Burns mm. looks like she's terrified out of her fucking mind to yeah. the point where you're like, yeah. something is really happening to this woman. But and Renee his, Zellweger is being directed. Well, because his point is like, to not we're here to emote scare the same yeah. way. Well, because he's telling her the whole Matthew McConaughey, the whole movie's telling her we're gonna fucking scare you, so she knows to be like, no, I'm not gonna be scared. And they just stick with it the whole fucking movie. It's like, well, this yeah. is great. This is entertaining. So it gets, it, she gets to stand up against Leatherface. Well, that's also the problem that I had with the remake. The you know the Jessica Biel character, 
you know, was could at least pretend that you know she was pumped full of adrenaline and kind of yeah. all freaked out. But they also made her, and this is uh, you know, they made her almost too strong. Oh yeah, they're for action the stars. yeah they they become action movie characters where it's like in order to be scared, you have to believe that this person is on the edge of losing their mind. Like e- everything mm-hmm. is gone, mm-hmm. and this is a fight or flight kind of you yeah. know in your brain is about to snap. Yeah, like that woman in that first movie at the end where she's oh my laughing God. her fucking. Uh, that's head how, like, off is like she has she's gone over the line. When yeah. I saw yeah. the first Something movie, it was nuts. two o'clock in the afternoon, and I was scared out of yeah, my fucking I mind. I was like, I did too. Like, it is, <laughs> I was like, it is the middle of the day. Why am I fucking terrified? Yes. Why do I feel like I'm watching a real snuff film? Why know? is that a thing? Watch just uh, the first time I saw it, my dad brought it home because it's too scary. And you it's can't like, watch that at night. Watch this out of your mind. You would I literally make go sure out you're all mind. right before I put you to bed. It does feel like I don't know something about in that first film when by the time they get to the dinner time, the dinner table sequence with oh. all those cl- super close ups of yeah. her, her eyes, eye, and it's the just, bloodshot eyes, and the madness that's happening. It just mm-hmm. feels like this is the craziest fucking thing that I have ever, at least at that point in my life, oh, I've yeah. ever seen. And this movie, I think, is trying to recapture some of that, right? In a way, by making you know all these people goofy, crazy. They're having domestic disputes where they're clubbing each other over yeah. the head with, you know. I mean, it's just like this but, madhouse. But the but problem, that's, I mean, yeah, right. The problem is that she's having normal discussions with these. She's yeah. like, "Don't yes. kill me, yeah. out Play, hey guys." I, right. the, yeah. Oh, come on, she's like this calm. Part, dude. The real estate agent lady kidnaps her, and then when Matthew McConaughey puts his foot, she's like, "Don't kill her." It's like the fuck do you care? She kidnapped you. Yeah, like kill her, you know. Yeah. And she's not. Why wouldn't you shoot? Why wouldn't? Why you, wouldn't so you shoot? Stupid. Yeah. I can't understand most of the motivation. No, the motivation. No. but the Bad. the best one, maybe well, an example. Probably is the uh, boyfriend. Right, is being held at gunpoint out in front of the house. This is when they first get there. <laughs> oh my god! And his girlfriend, oh the uh, the hot one. Don't is, shoot, Mister. Yeah, the hot ones are on the back being attacked by Leatherface, dragged into the house. She's screaming her fucking head off in the scene that I think Holly was talking <laughs> That's about. That's my girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, "That's don't worry, man. That's don't my worry. girlfriend. That's my girlfriend. Just Hands screaming. still in the air now, right? So the dude with the shotgun's taking him inside the house, and he manages to close the door and lock the guy out. And then he's good. Ooh, he's good. Then he's good. Then he's fine. like, shit, man. He's I like, really... honey, there's a guy outside with a shotgun. I really gotta go to the bathroom. Locked and- him out, though. He actually does spend the next like five minutes of the movie looking for the bathroom so he can pee. And we're like, what in the hell has yeah. happened here? <laughs> yeah, really he had were, to pee. There's a guy outside <laughs> who apparently doesn't care anymore that you're in his house with a shotgun. That's uh, all gone. There's a girl who you came with who's screaming her head off somewhere. somewhere. She's, <laughs> somewhere. She's stopped gone. screaming. So. And you're in the middle of Texas. And you're Which like, we, I got to find the mail. Wait, wait, how did he die? Oh, that's an interesting question. Did they ever show him know. die? They never showed him die. They knocked. They knocked him out next to Blank the freezer. Blank faces all around the table. They knocked right him out now. next to the freezer, and then he hung her on the hook, and that's the last. We well, saw because him. a lot because of this movie was like that. Like they hung there. that girl on the hook, then she was crawling in the road. I'm like, whoa, am I stoned, yeah. or did I totally miss? <laughs> yeah, she I got had herself to stop and ask. Hook. Wait, am I stoned? Yeah. Yeah. Travis, did you get near me? <laughs> Contact. I, I, I Are we all stoned? This? Because yeah. it just comes out of nowhere. She's just crawling across the road. I'm like, oh. It's the most geez. ineffective. Sometimes hooking. I do think about things while a movie's playing. It really is. There's but no nice. sound with it. And there's there's nothing. Yeah. Uh, well, you good. said when she gets hung. Well, yeah. She doesn't cry she in goes, a way ah, that like, she, yeah, she's like, oh, God, that's ow. uncomfortable. Ow. 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 I'm like, you know, this hook ow. is like penetrating like muscle, bone, and your lung probably up yeah. into your body cavity. Like, uh. Uh, uh, so and bad. the reason we're not talking about special effects is because there are fucking none. none. But we're also saying, as Sean pointed out I earlier, can make this fucking there movie. are so many beats of this movie, like the hook hanging thing, like a guy getting clubbed in the head by going through the man. window at the end. Mm-hmm. Somebody jumping through the window. Somebody uh, being in the woods, and all of a sudden a chainsaw starts up. The shot of the female protagonist running toward the camera while Leatherface oh, yeah. with the chainsaw yeah. is yeah. running behind the dinner table scene. I mean, like, there are so many echoes of the first movie that this, I think that's why in the back of the box it is considering it a remake. Yes. Even though the opening credits thing is well, clearly saying it's a sequel. Yes. Because this happened three times before. Yeah. Yes. Because we didn't, if this was today, we'd call this a great remake. 
<laughs> we will. We'd be like, it's Reed. Oh, yeah. Based off of episode seven and Creed and stuff like where they just take the same movie and just like, ah, there's a black guy yeah, and a woman. But in the those movie. movies today. did it well. Yeah. This movie is They like, still did it. They're still guilty of the crime of just taking the old movie and like putting a few new characters in there being like, it's totally new. It's like, no, it's not, motherfuckers. You took the same movie and just, you know. And I always wonder if there's any difference between, because this is a... A uh, slightly shortened cut of this movie, what? which is crazy. Which is crazy. But when it was, I'm sure first, the other was just more running around by the truck because I mean, there it, was 20 minutes of just running in the woods and <laughs> running. Was. There are a the few truck. scenes where like yeah. Renee Zellweger, Zellweger gets away, Matthew McConaughey brings her back. Renee Zellweger gets away, Matthew McConaughey brings her back. Dude, like this but, fucking movie because they don't want to kill her. That's why this movie sucks. Is because right, they want her to get away and tell well, the story of fear. There's, there's it's no like, well, that's advancement stupid. on trying to do anything to her. They're just kind of. It's a show around her. Yeah, it's Matt a show. It's it's just dude, that's a good... Doing nothing it, it's a haunted her. house. It's a Basically. haunted house movie. It's the scariest haunted house you'll ever go to where they pick you up in a truck and they and they fucking, look at that, look at that. But you is know, that the point? That, shit. I, that the is Illuminati. the point. The Illuminati. But what well, I was going to say is... D- it's, it's a dumb idea for a horror movie. It really is. And I wonder if anything... I, it's probably things just getting cut down, but when I mean, when it was first made... The Return of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It was a 97-minute movie. The one we watched is an 84-minute. Oh, shit. But I think... Or an uh, 87-minute we watched. 94-minute was the original cut. But I don't think that cut exists because that was like a first cut uh, festival kind of screen for people cut. Mm. And I'm sure after that... People I'm hated sure, how long it was. <laughs> maybe, yeah, short. it's like, you need to cut it down. But I think shortly after that, it was cut down to this time. And this is the cut that is out there. I don't think the other one exists anywhere. And there has to be a significant amount missing with, I mean, how the girl got off the hook. She ends up somehow out in the middle of the road. She's basically fine, right? I mean, basically fine. She's just kind of like. It paralyzed her, apparently. Yeah, like, oh, I don't feel like getting up. I don't feel like getting up. Like, you got a hole in your back. And then the chick hits her with the stick. She's like, don't. Like the cook does in the first movie. Just just barely just like, uh. Uh, don't, you're hitting me. Don't do it. Stop, Stop hitting me. All right, just don't crawl All right, away. Just don't crawl away. <laughs> By the way, another one got out. She's crawling across the road. Bear, go get her. Yeah. <laughs> the dinner say, the dinner table scene ups the ante from the first movie. In the first movie, they wheel out Grandpa. Mm-hmm. The corpse, basically, we think. And yeah. it turns out that the fucking guy, yeah, you got to see this Every, movie. Yeah, the Grandpa looks a little more alive in this one. Well, yeah, okay, there's so there's there's, scene, there's right? a there's like three other corpses at the dinner table. Yeah. And this old guy corpse. And then all of a sudden in the middle of dinner, when everything's getting all crazy, he just, he gets, just up, kinda, he gets up and walks away. Grabs a knife with and with a just, knife, yeah. And he's he grabs gone. a knife and he's gone. He yeah. was alive the whole time. He really did just yeah. walk away. Like it got yeah. cut. It just <laughs> He just got up and fucking walked out of the movie. Ah, there's people yeah. to kill. It's the weirdest fucking thing. Weirdest. It's the, weirdest. <laughs> it's the weird. They're like, cut it back. All right. This movie's too long. We need to cut back everything but the Illuminati. That's the that's the theme we're going with, and we're going to stick with it. Yeah. And they just cut everything <laughs> else out. It is very bizarre. It's they don't even bizarre. afford these characters, like, decent uh, the comeuppance, right? Yeah. Like you no, expect at, at the end of the movie. Well, it's either going to, I mean, because basically they, they mirror the first movie again where you know, heroin staggers out into the road at dawn, and yeah. there's a truck, in this case an RV, passing by, and Leatherface is out there, you know, with his chainsaw trying to track her down. <clears throat> this movie adds uh, the appearance of a crop dusting plane. <laughs> yep. That it really needed it. An Illuminati controlled <laughs> crop dusting plane? Uh, Oh, 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 maybe, no. maybe. Wow. No, it, it didn't have a sign on the Man, side. No. It saved her. It wasn't it, trying to scare but, her. It did, because. They thought they're going too far. They need to stop. Well, there was a crop dusting and, hero, is what that was. But, yeah, but the crop duster is, there to, keep, is there to keep an eye on the rest of the group. No, he's, like, no, he's, no, he's yeah. like the black truck driver from part one. That was the just old le- folks just in the motorhome. Lending a helping hand. He's like, I've heard about this shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And goes and so it. somehow he's able to take out Matthew McConaughey, but not hit uh, and pull up immediately yes. within like about five feet, right? He can yes. pull back up again I'm without uh, killing him. That's one the pilot. Cliff Secord. Yep. <laughs> and what happened? Who else was chasing the other uh, and, uh, dude, Leatherface right? Leatherface. And oh, Leatherface. It was right, Leatherface right. and Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. That was it at the end. Yeah. Because Matthew McConaughey kills the, the other people. 
Matthew McConaughey clubs the other uh, family member with a hammer. W.E., kills him. yeah, just yeah. over the head. He, and, he goes a little bit crazy and starts cutting himself with a blade and starts crying. Because he yeah. just has to scare you. That's all he's doing. Scream. That's what it feels like. That's all he's, he's doing. He's not trying he to kill you. like uh, Chicken Wire Hell. Uh, it is uh, Chicken a Wire Hell. A member of Chicken Wire Hell. That's what he f- feels like he's doing. He's putting on a show. Yeah. What happened to the yeah. woman? Which one? Uh, which the, real, the realtor? I don't know. Family she just left member? in the house. Like when Renee Zellweger That's runs out, thought. she doesn't get killed. No, Leatherface goes after her. Uh, Matthew, Matthew kind of freaks with his out his leg and fucking for a while. like throws her on the ground, and then he sets her friend on fire. Right? Because yeah. she's like Renee Zellweger's like, I'm not gonna cry because I'm a strong woman, and this is the '90s. Yeah. And it would have been better if she just said that. She should have just said that. <laughs> it's a, it's that an honest voice. script. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and honest. then there's a scene uh, it ends up the Illuminati dude does actually pick her up and take her to the fucking emergency room That's where insane. she runs into what you guys are saying I didn't notice it or I they couldn't recognize her but yeah. that's Marilyn it's Burns Marilyn Burns on the stretcher and Franklin's pushing her because somebody Which says the, the God, act, they didn't it's, show it's his the face actors, it's the actors doing it yeah. Not the actual characters from the first. Like she's yeah. still crazy. In but that I like hospital. to think. I like to think it's that's what I like to anonymous. think. That, that's Marilyn Burns is playing her actual character from the she's first one. Still crazy. And she's still crazy. And for some reason, she's hospital. anonymous in the credits. Yeah, because they're cool. Like yeah. they're spooky. Well, yeah. she didn't want to be associated <laughs> it's like, with this. It's like the rabbit. Yeah, she's the, like no, 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 no. Right. It's like the rabbit at the end of Cabin Fever, where it says "We'll never tell" in the credits. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Genius. Genius. Whoa. Genius. Or right. conspiracy. Well, does that wrap up the Texas Chainsaw I Massacre? I think fucking the next so. show. Oh my God. <laughs> Indeed, it does. Jesus. Well, listeners, we want you to stick with us. through. We're going to uh, answer some mail, and then on the other side of that, we're going to uh, do our final wrap-ups, and you'll get to hear what we really think about this movie. Ooh. We hope you'll stick around. And don't forget, uh, you can get a hold of us on sa- uh, Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Go over there and tell us what you want us to watch and uh, it's we're going to pin it to the top of the feed. So uh, it's time to summon Igor. Sean? I, oh, Igor? Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Wait, thank you, Igor, aren't you going to say uh, welcome back to... Sh- no, uh, you, dude, you pissed him off. <laughs> Igor, I'm, he doesn't I'm like. I'm sorry. That's not what a family Come does. On. A family doesn't just take off and say, you know what? He's... I'll be back in two months or when it's my move. <laughs> Whichever Igor, comes first. Igor like. is just an Indians fan. He will get over it and he will survive. There you go. All right. Uh, so, on. Uh, oh, by the way, you can also get a hold of us on Twitter. We're at Sat Freak Show. And by email, we're Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. And Crypticus writes in and says about our episode about Dracula last week, about the recoloring of the movie. uh, He says, sometimes directors are idiots. Yeah. Yeah. They shouldn't be able to fucking (laughs) fuck with their own movies like that. I don't think they should. I saw that uh, Scream Factory shot you down. As yeah. far as as far as getting that movie in color, yeah, we said uh, Scream Factory. Can you come to? And they're like, we wish we could. So which apparently- means it's coming soon. <laughs> is what I say. They're like, sorry, we don't know anything about that. It's like you fuckers. It's coming. All right, so you just wait. Uh, G Money writes in and says, Texas Chainsaw: The Next Generation is not good. <laughs> it's not bad. Ah, it's just a big steaming mess. Uh. McConaughey displays variations of this character later in his career. True or false? Di- versions and variations. Versions yes, and variations, I would say yeah. so. I don't know yeah. if I've ever seen him this manic. He's... Or this over the top or flying it's very over the He top. thought that it was going to get cut and like edited and stuff like <laughs> responsibly. <laughs> so like, like I could just in. go off, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Now do go it. big, Matthew. You want crazy? This I'm guy's a clown. Yeah. <laughs> this clown will do anything for a few bucks and some baloney. <laughs> uh, Michaela Tyson writes in and hey, says, Michaela. "Is this movie an origin story for Matthew McConaughey's character in Frailty?" Ah, dun, dun, dun. he's no. He's pretty I sane, right? No, I mean, not not sane, well, he's but, crazy, like, but he's, he's the low. Key. He can talk about it in Frailty. So yeah, he's just say, gonna tell you, you know. about the things and just do the thing. <laughs> Right. Like, he, is, <laughs> <laughs> he is calm, insane, yeah. in yeah. frailty. He's the Hannibal Lecter crazy in frailty. Yeah. They're like they're like twin brothers.
brothers, and this is the crazy one, and then his other brother is in frailty. Yeah. Uh, Nick Hammond writes in. He says, I vomited in my mouth. This movie is just plain garbage. I'm sorry. And Jacob Laws writes in and says, this movie was headache inducing. (laughs) So again, we thank you all for writing in. Thank you. Uh, And now it is time to do our final wrap ups. And that means you hear that sound out there. Oh, my God. The hour has come, says... Thank you, Lurk. Thanks, Lurk. Thanks, Shit. Lurk. All right, so death rattle <laughs> in that stare. Yeah. Uh, so that means we're going to start things off with Travis. Travis, what did you think of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre of the Next Generation? Uh, if I could make one long <laughs> fart sound, <laughs> that is what I would do to review this. If I movie. could kill myself before I saw this movie. <laughs> yeah, it's just. I mean, I can't even. I mean, there's no point in even justifying why it's bad. It's just horrible. It's just horrible. It's just a shame. It's just one of those things where, like, there's so many horror movies that, like, I don't know why. I can't get enough of, like, a Jason sequel. or But, like, some movies are like, dude, you had one movie. Be happy you had, well, I like part two. But still, like Psycho, I'm sorry. Psycho is one horror movie. Doesn't need to have a seek. Doesn't need to do 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 do. Yeah. Halloween. I love Halloween too. It's on my. It's on. I love Halloween too. Actually, I cor- I had to correct myself. It was not on my uh <laughs> my my top list. No. Of uh, Halloween, but I love Halloween too. But it doesn't need a sequel. It doesn't. Doesn't need it. Just doesn't need it. Because that's why even after two, it sucks. Because it's like, well, we is he going to keep going after his sister? I don't know. It doesn't like, suck. Like, we wrote ourselves into a fucking corner. Why are you no, asking questions? Yeah, he has no plot. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> this is a movie. And you would think, you would think that, like, the fact that Leatherface don't have characters that are so tied up that, like, oh, th- really, the sky should be the limit on what you could do with the Sawyers. Uh, <laughs> not the Hewitts. Not the Hewitts, <laughs> the Sawyers. Uh, but they've never done it. They've never, like, you know, they can never. And I think the problem is, is like, okay, once you get rid of the dad and Chap Top, it's like, I don't want to learn a new family every fucking move. Who oh, is that little girl in the family? Is that fucking person? It's like, like you said, every person you run into now is in the family. It's like, whoa, I'm shocked. I'm so shocked the crazy mad hillbilly is in the Sawyer or the Hewitt family or whatever. Did like, they do that in one of them? Or was it Texas Chainsaw 3D where, like, she went, went into the town and she found just more members of the family? That had to have happened in one of them. No, right? in, in the Texas remake, Chainsaw 3D, the it was the townspeople that were evil. That's yeah. the whole, like, yeah, glorification like of bad morals. Leatherface was a good guy by the end of that. Yeah. Fight. It was the weirdest. <laughs> yeah. Weirdest it's thing. fucking, yeah. yeah. It, it's yeah. just that whole, like, Melissa Fent, the whole the bad guys have to be misunderstood. They can't possibly be bad. Yeah. They're he just yeah. eats <laughs> people he and shoots them up us. with chainsaws. It's just the evil Christians. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that. So, yeah, fuck this fucking movie, dude. Like, fuck you, Sean, for even making me watch this. <laughs> like, I could have been, I could have, like, you did like coloring? A, I could have done a uh, no. I just could. Yeah, I could have been coloring. No, I'm not infantilized like you. Uh, no, I could have done a sick day, but I'm like, you know what? No, no, I'm gonna rail this. I want to fucking get. I'm in. Cause this is it. You know, this is it. I saw it in '96. Now this is 20 fucking years later and a fucking never again for the rest of my life. Someday your nephew's going to go, I want to see yeah, all the see Texas all Chainsaw yeah. Massacres in a row. I'll be like, all two of them. Absolutely. <laughs> right away. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, fuck this movie. Uh, yeah, I mean, it. Uh, I mean, I guess I'd say it wasn't... Uh, I've seen really, really bad movies. This wasn't horrible, but it's pretty fucking close. I mean, it's down there on the bottom rung. Not anything that you'd <laughs> intentionally foist on anybody. There's Atomic Monster <laughs> movies better than that. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Yeah. Is it better or worse than Robot Monster? I, I think it's better than Robot Monster. There you Robot go. Monster? Oh, it's, t- it's the one with the guy in the gorilla suit with the diving helmet on his head. Is oh, okay, oh, okay, okay, okay. I never Even knew I the name of that. that yeah, I never knew the name of that. Robot Monster. Good Robot Monster. Good to know. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it does have, uh, I don't know, I mean, for all, you know, the shit we gave it about, you know, McConaughey, he comes out of this looking relatively decent, right? It's like, man, there's a guy who's committed 100% there. Insane. Hillbilly, He's working for animal his family. <laughs> Although he apparently doesn't know what movie this is. Uh, when they <laughs> asked him about it later, there was a, a Jimmy Kimmel or something yeah. where he, he identified it as Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Um, I'm sure he Oh, just... he had no idea what came before this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, never no, saw no. any of these movies. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, maybe. Yeah. Um, Renee Zellweger fares less well, I think, because she's almost catatonic in scenes where she should be emoting in some way, shape, or form. Not directed yeah. well. Yeah, I think that's the no, cu- that's the ultimate It was culprit. weakness. They didn't want to direct a weak female character, because that's where we are nowadays. But she didn't... Uh, there was times when, like, you should be in pain, or you should be shocked, and <laughs> something, but she has, like, a muted response. But yes. yeah. it wasn't just her, it was all it's the characters. They, yeah, they have zero distress. <laughs> yeah, zero. It's all I, is but I to think, be in the ADR. <laughs> I think that is the fault, primarily, of the director. I, I think, think Kim so. Henkel is not a... You know, I mean, you go back and... And this is, I think maybe I said this on uh, uh, when I did my favorite movies list, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I always thought was like a really rough, roughly made movie. Right. Mm -hmm. But upon seeing it, you know, over the years, it's like this movie is actually well put together, well shot, well choreographed, like there's stuff going on. But it also brings that like the rough edge of uh, what feels like that it's real documentary filmmaking, like it's really happening in front of you, which Mm -hmm. you don't get from. That I'm fucking so shot that fall in the first one that follows mm-hmm. that girl from underneath. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's just like that's that one of the shot. most beautiful shots in American yeah. cinema yeah. history. Yeah. 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 They duplicated it in the uh, or tried to try to the yeah. remake. Yeah. Which was shot by the same guy, Daniel Pearl, who did that. Um, yeah. So it's badly directed. Poorly conceived. I don't understand what I mean, aside from a financial Financial gain, right? Like what Kim Hankel got out of basically retelling the exact same story that he already told, you know, in some cases, beat for beat. It felt like that he had done 10 years prior to there. He just took his old script. Yeah. And just went like, well, this is what they expect from a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. So we're going to go and give them the same exact same beats, exact same scenes. Meat hook. Hammer to the head, uh, freezer. You know, it's like Jesus yeah. Christ. They just won't be startling or scared. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, case in point, the one scene where you know the heroine, after being chased by Leatherface, ends up in the cook's house. The the terror in that scene is he says he's going to go get her help, and he runs out to go start the car. The camera remains inside the building with her looking, and he leaves the door open. Mm. Now, we've just seen her being chased across the countryside by Leatherface. The fucking door is open. It's just black out there, and there's her alone, defenseless inside, and the door is in the frame in the background, and you're just aware that, like, any fucking second, yeah. this guy is going to come through with a fucking chainsaw. This movie attempts to do the same thing. Only they stage Fails it wrong. Miserably. She comes in to the uh, the real estate agent's office, sits down on the couch. Agent says, I'm going to go outside and go find something. And they put the camera outside the door, looking at Renee Zellweger sitting there. And it's like, you have completely misunderstood why the scene was effective the first time around. If we can't see the open door, you don't have the anxiety of the open door and what might suddenly appear in it. Mm. You know, There's so no that's, opportunity in that. Right. That's why I'm saying, like, the guy fundamentally is not a movie, a visual storyteller and a movie director. He can't direct uh, actors for shit, and he uh, can't direct suspense for shit. And, uh, I mean, as far as his writing goes, I mean, we got to say he wrote, co-wrote the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Not that it's, like, great, you know, bastion of cinematic dialogue or anything. Right. But yeah, this I want to know what did he atrocious. write. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, unless you're a Texas Chainsaw Massacre completist and you have to see them all. Fundamentalist is what I call it. Yeah, I mean, but you don't even have to see a series. There's really no continuity beyond the first two. After that, and even yeah. the remakes, I suppose those have, there's, you know, Texas Chainsaw, the remake, and the beginning have a continuity. <laughs> you, just, you, know, but you so, can watch them in any order. Doesn't yeah, matter. you can <laughs> just <laughs> see the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I think, in 1974, and you're good. Yeah, that's me. Then kill yourself because it's all like nothing better. Yeah, Down. Um, yeah, I kind of 
related to Matthew McConaughey when he's sitting on the floor cutting himself furiously and emotionally crying. Jesus. Okay. So you're a uh, I get it. During this, yeah, I would have been. This movie. <laughs> During this, yeah, I would have been. Uh, this was a pile of hot garbage. <laughs> this was awful. Um, I got to give props to Matthew McConaughey for being Matthew McConaughey, but psycho. Cause, to the 10th level? Yeah. No, he was... He was ultra mucho crazy. Ultra Matthew. mucho. That's even, now that's a good callback. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. To the, <laughs> the production of this movie. company. Yeah. Yeah. Production company. Bravo. Ultra mucho. Bravo. That's they named that after this movie was made. They're just like we're ultra mucho. <laughs> ultra mucho crazy math camera. All, right, all right. All right. Fantastic. Um, that's the only good thing I can say about this movie. Is he did a good job being crazy. Well done, Matthew McConaughey. Everyone else was complete shit. Don't waste your time. Done. Done. <laughs> um, Kim Hinkle uh, never directed anything again. I'm oh, yeah? I'm really shocked. And shocked it's face. kind of <laughs> obvious what? to see why. Did he um, do anything between Texas Chainsaw I think Massacre this, and this? There's writing stuff. He wrote stuff. Uh, For, but, like... For to murder she but, wrote. Or I mean, like, it's hard to say. You have to. You have to <laughs> it's hard to say. Look then your that way. Means to, no, if he, you can't look up a list of things well, no, he wrote. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> you have to like scoop past all the characters by stuff, which always gets put under the written by oh, in IMDb right, yeah. because anything Texas Chainsaw related gets a him credit for it. So you have to like get rid of that, get rid of that. So maybe like a couple things. Not much. I think he's more of a producer for things. Writing, huh. no. Directed, never again. And you can see why. Because even... Uh, I mean, these are hard to make. <laughs> I mean, later on, I think they... Uh, we're looking at this many years later. I think they... I mean, the back labels this as a hilarious, bone-chilling remake. And I think they labeled the hilarious... After the fact. After the yeah. fact. Because... Um, <clears throat> If he didn't intentionally, I mean, I I don't know. There's a there is an hour making of documentary on YouTube. It's called um, "The Return of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre: The Documentary." Um, give it a watch. Uh, very interesting. Um, but I, I mean, it's easy to see why he didn't direct anything again. It feels like uh, almost like Travis mentioned earlier, like um, Toby Hooper wrote the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Kim Hankel was sitting next to him going, oh, yeah, do this, and maybe do that, and maybe he took what some of What if he's a ideas. hitchhiker? That's a good idea, Mike, or whatever, <laughs> right, yeah. or whatever his but fucking then, name is. But it feels like Kim Hankel was just oh, shouting Kim. out really weird Mike. things to put in the script, and Toby Hooper shot them all down, and then 20 years later, he's I like, do. I'm going to take all my ideas and make my own movie. Maybe, yeah. maybe, Illuminati. Illuminati. In there. Illuminati. No, maybe, in there. maybe Kim Hankel's the guy that's like, and what if he wears a like skin on his mask? I mean, what, what if that's all Kim Hankel ever really did is kind of create the bad guy? <laughs> so Toby Hooper's like, hey, uh, yeah, right. we wrote it together, dude. Right. <laughs> but all the ideas that got shot Me down, too. I feel like got gathered together again, and he decided he wanted to make. His version of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But leave Leatherface and Leatherface out of it. Right, but just <laughs> put him off to the side and be like, all right, you'll get a Because he doesn't understand that. <laughs> it looks like maybe he did it. The, the alternate universe. It's like the bizarro world Texas <laughs> yeah, Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Um, the few bizarro. redeeming things, like we said, Matthew McConaughey is on another level in this. He's really, uh, it's fascinatingly dedicated to this role. And I think... Um, what is required of him, he delivers in spades for this. I mean, yeah. the rest of the movie is... But why doesn't anybody want to say that's hammy? That's overacting. Yeah, it's over that's right. hammy. Oh, no, it's like, truly. that's not good it acting. It's, it's like, he is not a good actor but in this movie. Uh, it's that he's, like, he's there. Lucky. But he but believes just, it, though. Yes. Yeah. He yeah. is. My, my, <laughs> he theory, my theory is the first one, you have such a compelling um, feeling of being unsettling. Like, everything is so unsettling yeah. in the first one. This had none of that, so I feel like he was overcompensating. He wanted to make you feel like uncomfortable. And again, I think we chalk this up to <laughs> yeah. like shouting. Yeah, and, but I think, and I think that's it. Movie. But I chalk that up to directing, and that's yeah, because agreed. he's the just writing, like, we everything. need everything on amped up high. It's Leatherface, you. I want you to yell all the time. This is, this is him trying to remember what Toby did, right? All at once. And we'll just go from there. And then they took the beats from, you know, the first one, and they yeah. tried to make their own version of it. Not entirely successful, to say the least. Um, I, I like Toby how Toby had said, them think... screaming. Yeah. Scream more, everybody. More, more, everybody. Double, double everything. <laughs> Not you, you're strong. <laughs> <laughs>
But um, but I'm I the think... victim. Nope. <laughs> nope. Not I mean, in this movie. If you look at the series, you get a little something different with every version of the movie, or at least the first four. I say maybe the other first ones kind four. of more. You're crazy. This is considered in that. Well, <laughs> like that's what I'm saying. You space. get something like a little different with each one. They're not all kind of the same as you go along. There's different elements that stick out more, I think, in the sequels as they go along. Um, ridiculousness is the main contributor to this one. Um, I don't... I mean, uh, yeah, that's a C3 it, it, I think I think it's ridiculous enough to, if you know the series, uh, to give it a watch, because it is completely ridiculous, and it is, especially the acting at the beginning, uh, it's worth a laugh, uh, I think worth a viewing. Um, even if you're not, like, the biggest fan of the series... Uh, I'd give it a watch because it's, you know, it's funny. It's something to see. And uh, yeah, you may get something out of it. You laugh at it. You get a good laugh. So uh, I'll recommend it. All right. Well, that is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The next generation. I feel compelled to say that. Title yes, full indeed. Way. I was Colin, adding a the, Colin, the, the next yeah. generation. <laughs> All right. So next week. Holly's going to pick the movie. Yes. Holly, what are we watching next week? Next week we are watching The Stepford Wives, 1975. Uh yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're not that, that? Cut it. Yeah, yeah. cut it right there. <laughs> I like that movie. <laughs> whoa, 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 Barry, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Giving it away. So uh, that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Stop over to the Facebook page. Tell us what you want us to review. And until then, the basement is going dark.